Well, you know, when you're involved in one of these things, the first thing you think about is when it all started. And I think of a, a young student athlete here at Rittner in 1974, coming in this big old school and not knowing where he's at and what he's doing. Uh, like our previous uh, inductee, I have a lot of people to thank for guiding me along the right direction. Obviously, my parents, my sister, who nominated me, I want to thank her for this award. My wife, who supports and loves me endlessly. My family that's here, my teammates. I had four teammates that came here from 46 years ago. How about that for written wow. book? Before I get going, and I can get going being a 38-year coach, so I apologize if this sounds like a coach 10 points down at halftime in the locker room. But that's who we are. I was very intense about athletics from a very young age. I played soccer in the CYC League, which was big here in the 60s and 70s. Uh, at Hague Middle School, I did football, I did track, I did basketball. I still don't know how I ended up being cross country and track. But I guess I'd have to say it was a gentleman up here in the top who was one of the greatest coaches and mentors I ever had. Uh, I was lucky enough at Jefferson City High School to coach with the most, or the winningest football coach, Pete Atkins, 405 wins in football. And I remember asking him one day when he was interviewing some young coaches if he was going to interview any of them, and he was pretty much to the point, not very tactful either. And I said, Coach, you're going to hire any of those young coaches? He said, I'm not hiring any of them, Jim. And I said, why not? And he said, because I don't think any of them could coach a bird out of a cage with an open door. <laughs> well, you know what? I had a coach that could coach birds to build a cage. <laughs> But he was a relationship builder, and that's probably why I ended up off the track across country. I wanted to be involved in his group. Uh, I wanted to be a part of that group and, and the family that he created. He understood that old educational tenement that kids only care about what you know or what you want only after they know you care. And we were a family. And we didn't want to let each other down when we ran. And we didn't want to let him down. And that's what I tried to be as an educator, as a coach. I tried to be a relationship builder. I figured if I fell short on the scientific part or the physiology of training kids, I could always fall back on the fact that these kids would run hard because they didn't want to let their family down. They didn't want to let their coach down. I had great mentors at this school. You know, when, when you look back at, at the age I'm at now and you wonder how you got to that point, you start remembering people who kind of guided you. I, I can remember an English teacher here, Mrs. Martha Osthoff, 47 years ago. I could care less about reading a book. Now, I did well enough in school because obviously I had to impress my parents. But she actually made a, a point to build a relationship with me. And, and by the time I got done with her English class, I liked writing. I liked reading. I had great social studies teachers, Mr. Boxerman and his brother, Mr. Boxerman, Mr. McCann, Mr. Henry, Mr. Doring, great physical educators, Mr. Green, Mr. Goodman, Mr. Doney. I ended up being a social studies teacher and a phys ed teacher and a cross country and a track coach. Does that tell you how much my Rittner mentors meant to me? And when I first started, all I wanted to do was be like them. I wanted to have those relationships with athletes. I wanted to be around kids. You know, I know we have a lot of educators in here currently and retired, and we've had some of them inducted into this hall. 
I don't think I'd have to convince anybody or I don't think I'd have to sit down and, and lecture them on the fact that our teachers are needed more than they ever have been. I currently travel around the state not only speaking but listening to the stories of students of trauma, those that have been in rough situations. We have one out of three kids that suffer from depression nowadays before age 18. We have one out of three kids that live in a family of addiction. We have kids with PTSD before they even hit age 10. I know it's important that these educators make sure these kids have great subject content and they learn what they're supposed to. But we need teachers and we need mentors worse than this country's ever needed them. So I want to thank the teachers because I didn't have to put up with visual teaching. And I didn't have to try to communicate and build relationships like you guys have. And quite frankly, I don't think what I just listed as some of the problems with our children today, I don't think I had much of that either during my time. I hope if you know teachers, you shake their hand, you pat them on the back, you hug them as many times as you can. It's a tough, tough job. I'm proud to be part of that profession and part of that fraternity. I hope that more young people continue to do so. It's a great profession. We need to continue to do things to help our kids get through these tough times. Be a relationship builder. Be what these kids need. This school was my guiding light. As a sophomore, I just did well enough, but I was involved in a program that well enough wasn't good enough. And if I wanted to be like my role models, the upperclassmen on the team, then I had to commit. I had to commit to being the best student I could be besides being the best athlete I could be. And that's something we need to preach to kids too, what, what real commitment is and, and what it is to sacrifice and what it is to lay it on the line. We live in a culture today that worries me because we're not pushing our kids out of the comfort zone enough. I tell parents when I get to speak to parents with my current organization, push your kids out of the comfort zone as often as you can. They'll learn how to deal with life when it gets tough. They'll also be healthier as a result of it. They'll also never lay down when things get tough. They'll always get up and try again. I was blessed my entire career to be around people like Coach Wirtz. I had a Hall of Fame college coach at Jefferson City. I had many Hall of Fame coaches that were there when I took that job. I had a Hall of Fame family that I loved. I have a Hall of Fame life that I love. I've been a lucky man. Thank you to the Ritter School District for this honor. And thank you to Ritter School District for what you did for me when I was in school here. God bless you guys.